Hi, so today I'm going to talk about practice problem 13. It's a problem from chapter 1, um, and it's a common problem. Um, it's one of the four major topics that we'll deal with in personal finance. So what are those four major topics, first of all? One, we could have... Oh, our first type of problem is a future value of a single payment. So future value of a single payment. That's not what this one is, all right? We can tell that because we're looking at the fact that we want to borrow $8,000 at a 5% interest rate to be repaid in five equal payments at the end of the next five years, what would be the amount of each payment. So this is not going to be a future value. We're borrowing, not getting interest. Um, it's also not going to be a future value of a series of payments, all right, which is another major topic. All right, but this is going to be a series of payments. All right, so this is a series of payments. It's just not a future value of a series of payments. What are the other two? We could have a present value. Of a single payment. All right, since we want to pay this off in different chunks, um, equal payments, but over a series of course, um, of a few years, this is not going to be a single payment. So it's not going to be this one. It'll be this last guy, the present value of a series of payments. All right, so how do I know that it's a present value of a series of payments. I can tell that it's a present value of a series of payments because I know that I want to borrow $8,000 and I need to repay it in five equal payments at the end of five years. All right, so I want to know how much I'm going to have to pay in the next in each of the next five years in order to pay off this $8,000. So that's what tells me that it's a present value. I want to pay this off, this $8,000 off, in the next five years. Um, but I also need to pay it in five different payments, which tells me it's a series, not a single payment. All right, so that's, that's the first important step, is to understand which table I'm going to need in order to answer this question. So it's not a future value, all right, because I'm borrowing and I'm repaying that in the next few years. Um, and it's also not a single payment because I need to pay this off in five separate payments. All right, so what do I do now? I, have, I know that it's a present value of a series of payments, so I go to my tables, and I go down to 1D, which is the present value at the end of each period for a given number of time periods. All right, so I know that this is, this is my correct table. Now I need to know that I'm looking at um, the 5% interest rate, um, and I want to pay it off in five years. So I go to period 5%. I come down to five years, and so I'm going to be looking for this 4.329 here, all right? So I want the 4.329 because it's 5% after five years, all right? So I use those bits of information to get the correct uh, decimal uh, number that I'm going to divide by. So this 4.329 is the value that I'll need to divide by. So I come back over here, and I'm trying to borrow $8,000. So here are my calculations, right, $8,000, and I'm dividing by 4.329, and this will give me my each payment being about $1,848. Right, and so that will be my answer. So to recap, I need to know a few different really important bits of information to answer this question. First, I need to know that I'm talking about a present value situation here because I'm borrowing and I want to repay that money. Secondly, I need to know that it's a series of payments, not a single payment, and I know that because I want to repay this in, in five different blocks over the next five years. All right, so that's the first important piece is knowing that it's a present value of a series of payments. Um, the next inf uh, important information that I need to pull out of this problem is that I'm borrowing $8,000 and I'm borrowing it at a 5% interest rate and I'm repaying it in five years. 
So the $8,000 comes into the calculation portion. Um, the 5% and the 5 years are the pieces we need to know for the table. So in order to get the correct number, this 4.329, I need to know that it's 5% in 5 years. Alright, so that is how I get this answer. And thank you for listening.